How is Disney going to fill the Star Cruiser void? Let's discuss. Welcome to Princess and Scoundrel, where we take you along our scrappily ever after from fantasy land to Tatooine and everything in between. I'm Sarah. And I'm Steven. And Star Cruiser closing has actually created a very interesting predicament that we want to dive into in this episode. Yeah, I think so. Like we're just, we're digging right into it. <laughs> uh, we're still very salty about Star Cruiser closing. Yeah. What? Well, so I think this, this kind of conversation came up because we started thinking about uh, because we built, you know, we make costumes. Yeah. And now we do because yeah, of Star Cruiser. Because of Star Cruiser. But once it's gone, what are we going to, like, what are we going to move on to next? And that was kind of where my mindset was kind of going when we were thinking about what are we going to talk about. Right. But then it got us thinking that Disney had created this, like, innovative experience. And some of us, like, really jumped into it. And, you know, one of the things it did was bring in maybe new people uh, that were not new people in the sense like uh, that were Star Wars fans, but some of those Star Wars fans may have not been Disney fans. Right. Uh, They may have never been to Disney, not gone to Disney, but it brought more people eyes to what Disney was doing because of Star Wars. Right. Um, I think another thing it did was it created this playground for people, you know, kind of talking about the cosplay for us to just have this safe place for, you know, creating characters, dressing up and costume and stuff like that. And lastly, I think they made a lot of sacrifices to make it work by, you know, from their, their own parks, their own properties. I mean, I think a lot of people would say like, what, what sacrifices, (laughs) but they truly did try to put all of their, eggs in the star cruiser basket yeah let's dig into creating new disney customers really because this is something a trend that i noticed in booking people on star cruiser it was probably a majority of the people that i booked on star cruiser that had either never been to disney world and they're maybe like disneylanders or they had never been to galaxy's edge before or they've just like never been to disney any kind of disney park period, but they were so excited for Star Cruiser and the immersion that it was going to bring that they made the leap. This was what finally tipped them over the edge to come. And nine times out of 10, they would book additional park days to go to because they're like, well, while I'm here, which I mean, that's how they hooked us too, right? Like we went to celebration. We're like, well, while we're in Orlando, but Star Cruiser was the tipping point for a lot of people to really start visiting the Disney parks. And I think that's something really interesting to note is that it wasn't just the people that were really into Galaxy's Edge and the the semi-immersion that that brings. But even a step further from that, it was bringing in these people that were kind of on the fringe or on the fence about spending their money going to a park that for the most part is deemed as like a family vacation, yeah. right? Like for kids. It, well, and I wouldn't even say just that those Star Wars fans, but it was, I felt like there was other, um, maybe like that performance aspect of it or of that, that, uh, interactivity, that immersionness of people being able to feel that they could, uh, be immersed in this experience because there really isn't that I could think of something, you know, like this. Right. So I think that was another, like just bringing people like, here's a way for me to, you know, get these acting chops out, you yeah. know, these, these performances out that, you know, you may have had in the back of your head. Oh yeah. Um, and you talk about the repeat uh, visitors, repeat voyages. I think that was some of the things that, you know, for me it happened, but it was like a safe place. You know, I felt comfortable to be able to nerd about, nerd out about my things. Right. And, you know, I saw that multiple times of different, different people said it, that they just felt comfortable going there and, you know, being excited about this thing that they love. And it was, I don't think that was an intentional doing, but it, that's what happened because it wasn't a crowded, you know, 
theme park. It right. was this more intimate, you know, experience. And it was tailored to people with similar interests versus going to like Galaxy's Edge, where it's the back section of a larger theme park. So you have people that are really jazzed about Frozen and they're like meandering through to Galaxy's Edge. It's a mixed crowd there. And so you can't immerse fully the way that you could on Star Cruiser. Like even just looking at Galaxy's Edge on its own, they still say bright suns, rising moons. Sometimes they'll say credits, but now they'll say, oh, that'll be $5. Yeah. Well, and, and again, I think that's just a part of feeling comfortable. Right. Um, it's if you're in a big crowd, you know, some people may not feel comfortable to to be in the the act, be in right. the fun. They're just more reserved. And it, that's just the way people are. Um, one of the things before I forget, I think the big thing to like it also brings to mind is how when Disney took over Star Wars, there was a complete storyline of legends, you know, or now they've made it legends. And it was this expanded universe that when it seemed like George Lucas wasn't making any more Star Wars, the fans took it over and they said, we're going to make stories and make these really great stories. And when Disney took over, they kind of said, nope, those are not real stories anymore. This is going to be our canon. This is something that I think may happen where you created this space and it's not going to be something where you, you're, you're getting rid of it, but those people that still loved it are still going to want to do those type of things. Right. And I think that's where it's like, you're, you gave us something, you gave a taste, gave us a taste of it. Now you're trying to take it away and people are going to say, no, I want this experience. And they're going to figure out ways, you know, we have people, you know, making games around, you know, the Star Cruiser, you know, they're having you know, Star Cruiser themed, whatever. There's like know, meetups at conventions. There's 5Ks. There's fan fiction that's been created out of this. Like it's, there's been so much that has spawned because people need an outlet to put all of their energy and like excitement about this experience into. And none of those real things are really like in the Disney park. Yeah. Like we're having to go other places for these outlets. And I think that's where... It's it's an opportunity Disney is going to miss out on because, again, Star Wars fans love Star Wars. Yeah. They're going to spend money on Star Wars. If you make it good enough, people are going to spend the money on it. And when you take it away, that doesn't make Star Wars fans happy. Right. Yeah. I mean, so what – and we've yelled at each other with our friends <laughs> about this endlessly – is Disney created – almost like a brand new type of customer profile, right? It's not just the people that want to bound or want to ride all of the rides or want to see all of the shows or whatever it is, or eat all the food in the parks. Now there's this whole new customer profile of a person that wants to be a part of the land, of the environment that they're in and be part of this story. There's nowhere else right now on the Disney properties that has that. Yeah. So they're, they've built this like a mega customer because it's not even like. <laughs> well, and I mean, I think that's the thing is there's, if you think about like the Ren Fair. Yeah. The Ren Fair is typically an annual thing and people will make, uh, you know, their annual trip to the Ren Fair because it is a, an, ex, you know, an experience. And then that, that type of person is like committed to it. You know, they, they create their story, they create their costumes and that's what, Star Cruiser was doing for a lot of people. It's yeah. like a way for us to, you know, live through Star Wars it, through this park, through right. this hotel. It was like luxury camp, like luxury run fair because you're not camping outdoors yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, I'm okay with that. But yeah, it was something that, and it was also, it hit emotions too because Star Wars for a lot of people is an escape and it, there's a very strong emotional connection to it. And so to create that experience that hit those emotions. And it, as we all know, I get emotional on Star Cruiser. Um, and I found Star Wars later in life. For people that found it earlier in life, it probably has an even bigger impact because that was, like you said, a safe space for these people to go have these experiences. 
now what do those people do? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm going to be one of the, the lost. Yeah. It's like of, an of, awakening. Well, and, and two, like when you talk about awakening is building costumes, building stories, building like this, you know, basically this whole piggybacking off of Star Cruiser. I didn't really get into like cosplay costuming until Star Cruiser. And I think it wasn't because I didn't want to do it and I, I found it difficult. It was just there wasn't that little motivation to to build a costume because there was cons that you would want to build for. But again, if you're more reserved, it may be something that you don't feel comfortable doing. Right. And, and again, I could blame it on myself, but I didn't feel comfortable enough to get dressed up to go to a con. Right. Um, and then there was just kind of that – uh, stigma that you felt that you would go and it's a competition. So you wouldn't feel that you could have it good enough to be out there, out and about. Star Cruiser was a lot more, it felt comfortable. It felt safe because you could build a costume and it didn't matter. Like as long as it was within, you know, and not even that, not like, even it, that. it was just like, if it was Star Wars to you, then it was Star Wars. Yeah. Cause there's people that wouldn't dress up at all and would have an amazing time. There are people that would, pick things out of their closet that they already had, you know, some like cargo pants and plain shirts and maybe throw a belt or a vest or something and you're good. And then there's people that were bringing their full on Mandalorian armor on, or they're dressed up as Twi'leks with the full face paint and everything. Yeah. I mean, and I think that was the thing is like, there was this opportunity for you to have that, have these costumes, have like, just go full out of what it means, you know, to, to you yeah. And to show it off. And like, and, and, and it's not just showing it off, but you're able to. You were celebrated you, for you it get to, too. Yeah. Well, you also get to just like, um, just live in it. Because that's another thing is like, you get real dressed up, you know, you go to the store, you go buy yourself and, you know, you know, a new suit, new dress, and you look real nice. You're, you're going to, you want to use it for, you know, a date night. Right. So you use it for the date night, but you don't really get to enjoy it because you're you're doing something for the date night. Right. So I think that's the thing is like you're this is that date night, but you're getting to like use it. Right. Like you get to just that's like kind show of it off. Star. People get to yeah, yeah, the the costume is the star of like truly, what you're doing. It was the catalyst for how almost not how you were treated, but like what path you ended up going on as a result of how you dressed potentially. Yeah. Right. You dressed in all black. Maybe First Order would take you if you wore Jedi robes or whatever. You could influence your experience based off of how you dress, which was amazing. Like you didn't even have to say anything. You could just show up looking in a certain way, and like, okay, this like this you're person a scoundrel. Wants to, this one, this person wants to play this way. They're visual cues that, yeah, we, you, you didn't manipulate the game, but you got to kind of like start yourself on a certain path. And so we did that each time we went, we're like, well, maybe we want to do this path. Let's make new costumes. And so as a result, you specifically, which I'm still salty about <laughs> because I used to be the seamstress in the family, but it was just like a, out of necessity. I'm like, I'm going to trudge along and like, it's going to take me a long time to do it. Now you're out here making jackets in a day with patterns you made yourself. Yeah. I am and it's, it's one of those things that, you kind of, uh, I wish I would have learned this sooner because maybe I would have been better at it. But then other times, like, I'm just glad that I'm able to, you know, figure it out as I, you know, as I'm going along. Yeah. But, but yeah, it, you know, I'm not the only one. There's other people that have done, you know, amazing things because, you know, story, creating stories, you know, for, you know, backstories of, of characters and, you know, just really evolving those characters, making it fit into the, you know, to how they're dressed or into the the universe, which is, again, it's just a wonderful thing that they have this opportunity because any other place, you know, this is, this would be legends, right? This is just the fanfic. This is just the, you know, uh, the stories that we could put together and no one's going to ever hear about because, you know, there, there isn't a, a place to, to show it off. Just, just imagine just, there's this, a whole, like you said, a whole world now of characters that have been created of costumes that have been just meticulously worked on and the details and all the fine tuning they're out there. They exist. 
you know, you've got, we've got multiple characters that we've taken on Star Cruiser. What happens to them now? All of these costuming skills that you've amassed over the last year and a half, where can you wear those things now? Again, I think this is where the fans are not going to let it, let that go. They're going to find somewhere. I don't know where it is, what it is, but they're going to find somewhere to do the same type of stuff. Right. And it is, you know, I think this is where it's something that Disney should look at because it's, it's a missed opportunity. It is. It's a missed opportunity because there's, you know, celebration now is two years. So, yeah. you know, there's, there's cons that people go to, they'll track to, but not that I don't think cons are in the same way, like in the same vein as what Star Cruiser was. Cause you're pulled in a million different directions on that. And I think that's the other point of Star Cruiser and what it created with the safe space and getting dressed up and really just like, throwing yourself into the experiences. There were so many other people there doing the same thing that in the course of a single voyage, you made friends. Like if you didn't make friends, you must've been so focused on your story because every voyage we've gone on, we've just like if infinity stones. We're just collecting more and more <laughs> of them because there every voyage is just filled with so many wonderful people that like the thing that you like. And you know, did the same preparations that you did to be there. And so you're like, oh, I found new friends. This is amazing. And it's created even beyond voyage specific friendships, a whole community of people that really loved Star Cruiser, what it meant to them. And I think a lot of us had an awakening as a result of it. And so there's just thousands of people out there that feel lost. Yeah. And I think kind of talking about how a missed opportunity for Disney I feel like they made some sacrifices to get Star Cruiser to the point that it was. Yeah. Because yes, it happened, you know, right after the pandemic, but they didn't bring back um, over at Star Tours the the Jedi Temple. Uh, the lightsaber tra- yeah, training. Yeah, the lightsaber for kids. training. Yep. Uh, Launch Bay hasn't really come back. Not not fully. Um, There's some meet and greets, but they don't have the show going or the the amazing merch shop that they used to have over there. They don't have the troopers roaming around outside either. Yeah. And I think the uh, Disney at sea, Disney cruise line, they they had halted that. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of things. I think they were putting on hold for star Wars because they wanted to kind of promote star cruiser. Right. And I know that there's this general consensus among the community that they did not try hard enough to make Star Cruiser a success. And yes, their marketing didn't hit the mark with exactly what Star Cruiser was. And it's one of those things where it's like, you don't know what it is until you do it. It's a very high price point. Like we all get that. It's a high price point to be like, well, just try it and see if you like it. And it's like, well, I can't drop five grand to just see if I like something. Yeah, That's a big commitment. But their marketing just fell short of getting people hyped to take that leap to go into it. It worked for a lot of people. And like I said, there's thousands of people that are just so in love with this experience, but they did make sacrifices and not putting more resources into the things that you, like there's a ton of things that they did not bring back to the Disney parks. I think because they were trying to funnel everybody to Star Cruiser. So like- So so do you think that we're gonna be seeing these things come back? I think that's the thing. Again, it's this is missed opportunities for Disney because Star Wars fans love Star Wars. Yes. There, there's, oh, there, there's, I mean, there's, there's some that don't. There's divisiveness. <laughs> I, I'm, I'll, I'll pause there. There's yeah. divisiveness in it. But in general, there's Star Wars fans love Star Wars. Um, if they're Disney Star Wars fans, then they're going to love the Disney Star Wars that they're giving you. Right. Um, but if you take away Star Wars that doesn't make me love you more. Right. Like I, I, this is, I love Star Wars. I don't necessarily love Disney. Right. Right. And I think that's the sentiment of some people. Of, of a general yeah, fan. Yeah, you yeah. specifically also love yeah. Disney. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying like, th- there's going to be a fan that's like, I just love Star Wars. I don't yeah. necessarily love Disney. I love Star Wars. Yeah. But if you don't have Star Wars, I don't want anything to do with you. So all these things that are you're, you're taking away, it doesn't sit well with people. Right. So I think that's, again, that's where I say it's like a missed opportunity. So let's walk through the things that 
Disney has not brought back. And even, I guess let's, let's look at it with like a business lens of like, is it feasible for them to actually bring that back into the parks? Because us as Star Wars fans, like just bring it all back. Right. Yeah. But there's some things where it's like, well, they're not going to really make much off of that, or it's not going to bring enough people into the parks to even warrant bringing that back. Right. So first one, let's talk about the Jedi. What is it? Trials of the temple Jedi training for little kids. It was a free experience. It was over there tucked away by star tours and they just had these adorable little kids in Jedi robes <laughs> with lightsabers and they taught them like three different moves, which is, it is a exact replica of the Lothcat crew. That's on Star Cruiser. Yeah, the lightsaber training for the they, they like teach, seven and under. They teach you a you know a block from the left, black from a block from the right, you know, block from up top, and a strike. Like yeah. that was what they taught you. They went through this whole you know spiel, but that's what they taught you. They could easily bring that over. They could absolutely bring that over. Like you had it before, you know, you moved it over. Just move it back. Just, I, I think that's an easy, and it's a it was a nice little show. We stopped every time to go. Our watch kids it. never participated in it, no. but we watched it every time because there were also characters that would come out and fight the kids at some point. Um, it was wonderful. And I think you could absolutely charge for that experience and just bring it back. Well, I mean, I think they were charging by here. You could buy the robe. You could buy the lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I mean, it was, like, it was, there was, there it was the right by tattooing trader. <laughs> But it wasn't, you couldn't buy the robe off your back. It's not like when you try on a pair of shoes and be like, well, you could wear it out of here if you want yeah. to, but charge for it, you know, charge 30, 40 bucks. My friend Brooke was like, sell a lightsaber with it. Like here, yeah. you buy the lightsaber, you can go do this training. Why not? Right. Yeah. So that one makes sense. You already have the space for it. You already have like all of the elements for it. Just start charging for it. And like, yes, I know like, nobody wants to pay for something that was free before, but like, that's just the age of Disney that we're in right now is where we have to pay for things that we used to get for free. Yeah. Uh, fast pass or what is it? Lightning lane. No, there's, I, I'm, I'm never going to get never. past, never get past that. It was fast. It'll pass. be the next iteration. <laughs> I'll still call it a fast pass. <laughs> it just rolls off the tongue. It's a lot easier. Yeah. It is. Um, so then let's move to, let's jump on the other side of the park to launch bay. Right now we still have just the character meet and greets. There was the theater that was there, which like, I don't know anybody actually. And then we're we're talking that. more more Disney World, right? Hollywood Studios, but Disneyland also had something similar. Disneyland had a launch bay. I don't exactly know what was in launch bay because we never had been to Disneyland, but when it was open, yeah. Um, but I assume that it was something similar in that it was character meet and greets and shopping. I assume. Yeah. Um, but I had that merch shop over there where you could like. Remember, you could make your own name tag, and it was your name in Arabesh. Yeah, it was super fun. Well, they had that, and they had like a, you know, they had some of the models uh, that you, you could get. You they, could customize a phone case. Remember, and, and um, there was it was just kind of like the hodgepodge of like of things, a little bit upper level from Tattooing Traders because yeah. Tattooing Traders is more like the toys. This was a little bit escalated. It was a lot more clothing. Yeah, um, they had the life size stormtrooper that you could purchase yeah, in there as that. well. Uh, but yeah, it, we're, I'm happy to buy more Star Wars. I would, every time I went well, in that you, launch base store, I bought something. Yeah. You would just go in to check out, see if there was anything, anything new, anything worth getting. Yeah. Uh, but just bef before launch bay was just more lively. It just felt more like that whole area, that yeah, the courtyard whole area. over there, and, you know, going to it recently, it's just it's just a cool place. I mean, there's good it's bathrooms like over cool there. Air you know, I'm, I'm saying oh, literally, a, literally cool place. a cool place, you know, for the hot sun. Yeah. I like the bathrooms over there cause there's nobody over there. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very quiet, but they used to have stormtroopers outside of launch bay too. That would interact with the guests that were just like hanging out. Like Again, you said, they, they moved that to, to bat too, but yeah. you know, it's still something that why not, why not have them over there too? Right. You, you have this space, have people, you know, Moved around over there, meet and greets. This, I think that would be a great opportunity for any of the makeup characters that we may have seen on Star Cruiser. That's a good place for them because it's a, you know, air conditioned, it's closed off. You know, why not? Yeah. Well, and like sidebar, I know that Disneyland and Disney World differ now, or Batu East and West differ with these kind of like seasonal characters. We, 
East has Mando, but West has like Mando, Boba, Fennec, and now Ahsoka. Like you could just put all that stuff in Launch Bay if you wanted. It's there. Oh. But anyway, I digress. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, oh, I mean, and we're talking about the characters right now, and it just got me thinking. Sacrifices. Disney, they were going to have a sit-down restaurant. That's where Gaia was originally going to be. It wasn't, it was Gaia's restaurant, right? Yeah. It was like or a California like club. That. Yeah. Um, but they, they sacrificed that to put it on Star Cruiser. And now you're not going to have that. That's what, I think that would be one of the biggest things I would love to see that's new in Star Cruiser or Star Wars in Disney would be to bring a table service dinner or restaurant to galaxy's edge and, and and the thing too is like it's so weird like you know again we're able to talk about it you're like but, <laughs> well because it's like they brought 220 you know space 220 20, yeah. at the same time that they built star cruisers like why would you do that like it doesn't make sense oh well you know why well i don't think they planned it that time because star cruiser did get delayed but almost every single person that i booked on star cruiser that was doing disney days wanted to eat at space 220 because they want that view, they want the space. But it it uh, again it, it boggles my mind that why didn't you put that near Galaxy's Edge? Yeah, and have it Star Wars themed. Yeah, so easily you could have done that because we won't have that anymore. You'll go to, you have to go to Space Two Twenty, but it won't be Star Wars themed, not like you have in the bridge. Yeah, but bring that table service restaurant, help it to like. Bring more people there over there. There is an area between Toy Story Land and really bad too. Like they could have built that restaurant right there. Well, they just opened a table service restaurant in Toy Story Land after it's been open for what six years. Just or maybe not even that many. But you could bring a table service restaurant. Yeah. You could have Gaia there. You could just like well, cycle see, I it through different I, people too. I wouldn't want it to be a sit down restaurant anymore. Be, again, because it. We had Star Cruiser. Because you're salty. I, 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 I had the good life. And you're going to give me this second, you know. Yeah, but imagine like the Bantha beef, the Silver Sea Martinis that could flow. Yeah, I don't know. I digress. It, but a table service restaurant in Star Wars would be fantastic. Like we didn't, get, literally the reason we did not get that was because of Star yeah. Cruiser. Well, I, I, on that, that's where looking at business wise, I don't see them doing that because they would have to. Build. They build. You know, that's, you know, capital that they'd have to build. But it is revenue, that more revenue that they could bring in versus bringing back, like, fully opening up Launch Bay. Because that's a free yeah. offering. So, But, I mean, that sometimes you got to think about, is it going to get more free things brings in people? And people are going to spend money, not necessarily there, but other places. Right. Whereas, like, a paid thing doesn't necessarily bring people in. It depends. I think there may have been a lot of people that wouldn't have gone to Epcot if it hadn't been for Space 220 as part of their like larger Star Cruiser trip. Um, but also like one of the biggest sales, and I don't know if this is true of Disney, but for most just like food and, and drink establishments is alcohol makes so much money. There's such a <laughs> markup well, on alcohol. I mean, that's, that's I think, the obvious. Yeah. I mean, given us recreating the Silver Sea Martini. <laughs> 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 but there's opportunity to expand Galaxy's Edge specifically for this instance with something from Star Cruiser, something new. Yeah. And, but, and you know, kind of going into spoilers, like, you know, close your ears, earmuffs. But there's the show that they could ease, like they had it when Galaxy's Edge, you know, the stunt show that's on Star Cruiser, it was, it was, Basically there, when Galaxy's Edge opened, there was something very similar to it. It was a media event, though. Yeah, but, the, but still, yeah, you had that- You did it. That performance. Yeah. Like there was, it was there. It's choreographed. Why, now that you, have, you don't have this, why not bring it to Galaxy's Edge? Right. Have it at the end of the night, similar to a, a fireworks show, or have it timed so perfect where things are happening, and then bring back the fireworks show. Oh. Right, you know, right there behind Batu. So if we're talking about things that we <laughs> used to have at Hollywood Studios that we no longer have. Let's hear it again, Sarah. Let's hear it again. The fireworks show. It was so good. It was so, so, so good. And it went through the original trilogy, the prequel trilogy, the sequel trilogy. It was a beautiful tribute to all of Star Wars. And it had fireworks, which like, you know, I love Happily Ever After. You know, it 
makes me cry every single time. But to see a fireworks show dedicated to Star Wars and you could, well, it, no, it wasn't there whenever Galaxy's Edge opened. It must have been briefly because they stopped it during the pandemic. Uh, I don't so it was remember. Like, yeah, it was like, but it was only for like six months or something. But could you imagine that's a way to get, oh, now I'm getting worked up. <laughs> <laughs> that is a way to get Star Wars fans in the parks, spending their full day in Hollywood studios instead of half a day and maybe going somewhere else or whatever. But a full day in Hollywood studios, doing the rest of the park, going about two, spending a good amount of time and money there, and then incentivizing them to stay till the end of the day. So you're spending all day and all the money for that day so you can be there for the fireworks at the end of the night. Yeah, I mean, we did it. Yeah. yeah, we would stay for for fireworks every time. Like we never saw Phantasmic. You still haven't seen Phantasmic no. because if there's an option of like Star Wars fireworks or anything else, we're picking uh, yeah, was, Star Wars was, fireworks. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I was I, every time I, yeah. we were. They had a parade. They had a parade with Captain Phasma, and I think it was called March of the First Order. And it would start at the front of Hollywood Studios, and it would march all the way to, um, basically that center, the the hub of Hollywood studios and Phasma and a bunch of first order troopers would march all the way down. They would kind of stop in this like center area and just intimidate people. And, and then they would march back. It was and see, fine. And, and I think, this, you know, we're, we're talking about all these things that were there that didn't come back, but it almost felt like that was the, the heyday of star Wars and Hollywood studios. Because before galaxy's edge, before right? galaxy's edge, yeah. because they also had like the star Wars nights, the, you know, galactic nights, you know, those were, again, it's just more Star Wars for us to go and, and, and enjoy and just to kind of get with Star Wars people. Right. And I think that's where, again, it goes back to Star Cruiser was there and you knew that if you went, you were going to be, you know, among your people, uh, your, among your Star Wars people. And and it, that's the big thing. It's like you could go to, to Batu right now. And yeah, there might be some Star Wars people, but then there's going to be just, you know, the the school, you know, the the band, the the cheerleader group that it's they're not they're just there for a theme park. Yeah. So they're not Star Wars people. They're just there for, to go ride the rides. And I think that's again the part where it's going to be a void that there's there is going to be when Star Cruiser's gone. Yeah. I think the other big thing is like you said Star Wars Day at Sea. This one to me is the biggest mystery. I do not understand why they have not brought it back because there are a few different types of IPs that have like specific sailings for them. So there's Pixar Days at Sea, there's Marvel Days at Sea, and then there was Star Wars Days at Sea. Star Wars is the only one that didn't come back, which makes me think, like you said, Disney was sacrificing that to push people to go to Star Cruiser because you could push people to go to Star Cruiser and they would add more days to their trip because they're already in Orlando. For a cruise, you have to go to Port Canaveral. It's like an hour and a half away. Most of the time people will add a little bit, a couple of park days to it. But I think they were, they're like, well, you're right there. You're already going into the park, right? Now that that's ending, we already have the full itinerary for 2024 and Star Wars Days at Sea isn't on it. So we know we're not getting it for at least at least until 2025, if they ever bring it back. But like, will they bring that back? Yeah. I'm, and again, it's missed opportunity. That That's, I think that's just like the sentiment that I have. It's just these missed opportunities. And again, I, I feel that Star Wars fans are going to create their own fun somewhere else. Yeah. You know, I it, it, wholeheartedly. This, this, this feels just like when, again, when Lucas started doing, you know, or he said he wasn't going to make any more movies, that expanded universe started coming. And then you're going to create, I think it's going to create even more division later on because people are going to be like, no, I've already created this story here that we've, you know, you took away, but we created something, you know, that we, from that. And then now you're going to try to take that away and make something else. You're going to have, you're going to alienate those people that are like, no, you took it away. So I love this anyways. And you're going to try to do something else. And I think that's what kind of happened with the whole, you know, legends and canon. There's just the people that are salty that like, oh, this was better. This was better. This was, and like, they can't get over that. Yeah. Even though this may be okay, 
that you can't get over that you took something away from me. You didn't give it to me. You deprived me of it for so long. Then you try to take away like this other story. Like it's just history repeating itself. Yeah. It feels personal. Yeah. And I, I've noticed a trend too, where a lot of my Star Cruiser clients are going elsewhere for vacations. Like I have not booked this wide of a variety of destinations since I started selling Star Cruiser. So people are already doing it. They're trying to find other ways to just go like disconnect and just And they're unwind. not going to disconnect to say, oh, well, since I can't go here, I'm just going to go, you know, go to the park. It's like, no, I, if you don't have it, then there's not a point. Yeah. And I think that's what, you know, that's getting missed. Right. So hopefully, hopefully <laughs> some of these things start coming back like the fireworks to the parks so that it does bring people back back to Hollywood studios specifically, right? Because that's where Star Cruiser was. It's not, like I said, it's not an East versus West discussion, but if we could get, just bring back the things that already were there. Yes, we would love a table service restaurant. I, I, we would I mean, love new experiences, but. Yes, I, I, I think, but I think the thing too is like, yes, we would, you know, everyone's going to love new experiences, but I think if you create this void, you have to make sure that you fill in. That that way, these the people that were on board stay on board. I think that's my like take from it all. I agree. Feed us, <laughs> <laughs> feed us, Disney, please. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's a good place to wrap up this episode. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. And if you have ideas for what could come back to the parks, or maybe what could just fill that void for you as a Star Cruiser fan, let us know in the comments. And. Mosh Eisley tickets are on sale for New York. Go get yours. Come hang out. Yeah, moshisley.com. Until next time. 